physicsinfo.co.uk. Another in the series of physics GCSE tutorials. An introduction to energy. Ultimately, the sun is the source of all energy, with the possible exception of geothermal. And energy tends to break into two distinct types. There's non-renewable, which is the fossil fuels and nuclear, that's coal, oil, gas and nuclear, and then renewable, biofuel, hydroelectric, wind, solar and tidal. Energy is always conserved. It cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change form. There are many examples. For example, a torch converts electrical energy into light and some heat. Energy changes can be represented by energy transfer, sometimes called Sankey diagrams. This is just a simple arrow, but the diagrams can become quite complex. We're mostly interested in useful energy out and wasted energy. The different types of energy tend to be called energy stores by the exam board. And these are things like sound, light, heat or properly thermal energy, kinetic, the energy due to movement, gravitational potential energy to do with the gain in height, Elastic energy stored in a spring or a bow and arrow or even in steam or particles. Nuclear from the nucleus of an atom. Chemical in chemical reactions, things like batteries. Electrical and potentially also magnetic, though this one's a bit debatable. We talked about um, energy transfer or Sankey diagrams being used to show where the different energies go. Uh, these are used to show the efficiency of something with the total energy in, the useful energy out and the wasted energy are identified. The wasted energy is usually described as lost to the surroundings as heat, but it could be lost as light or sound as well. There's always one question that asks this. There are a number of changes in the way that energy is stored that you are expected to know. There are five in total. We normally describe these changes as energy transfers. The first one is the energy transfers when an object is projected upwards or up a slope. Kinetic energy from the winch of the drag lift is converted to gravitational potential energy as the skier is dragged up the slope. The ball is given kinetic energy by the juggler's hand and it gains gravitational potential energy as it rises. When it falls, it loses gravitational potential and gains kinetic again. The second change 
is when a moving object hits an obstacle. From 70 miles an hour to naught in one second. The little smart hit with such energy that it moved 20 tons of concrete, leapt into the air and rebounded to the side of the road. The car starts with kinetic energy and once it crashes into the wall or the fixed object, uh, that kinetic energy is largely converted to heat or thermal energy. The third change is for an object being accelerated by a constant force. I immediately thought of something like a rocket. Chemical energy in the fuel converts to kinetic energy in the rocket. The fourth being the energy changes in the vehicle as it slows down. Just watch the brakes on the front wheel. The kinetic energy of the car is changed to thermal energy of the brakes. There's also obviously some sound. And finally, boiling water in an electric kettle. In an electric kettle, the electrical energy initially turns to thermal energy as the water is heated, but then when steam is produced, that would be considered to be elastic potential energy. One way energy is lost is to the surroundings as heat due to friction. Friction is reduced by lubrication. Lubrication doesn't necessarily mean things go faster, it just means less energy is wasted in sliding or turning an object. Modern engine oil. Incredible engineering that enables incredible performance. By lubricating the engine, the oil isn't simply keeping it running smoothly, it's protecting it and preventing damage. Oil begins its journey in the engine's sump, a reservoir of oil. From here, it gets pumped around the engine. The oil pump is vital to the life of the engine. It sucks oil up from the sump through a pickup tube, pressurizes it, and sends it around the entire engine through a circuit of oilways. From the pump, the oil travels to the oil filter, which removes microscopic particles and supplies clean oil to the rest of the engine. Clean oil flows to all the critical engine parts. The bearings, supporting the crankshaft and a continuous film of oil. Pistons, cooled down and kept clean by the oil's detergent action. And the valve train, protected by the oil's anti-wear system. Loads in the valve train are the highest in the engine. This is where the oil experiences the most stress. To avoid friction and damaging wear, these fast-moving metal components must be lubricated. So, to summarise, 
Lubrication reduces unwanted energy transfer by reducing friction and wear. Remember, lubrication doesn't make things go faster. It makes them more efficient, meaning that more of the energy put in changes to useful energy. Energy, particularly heat, is lost in other ways too. And this is where insulation has a role. Objects can lose heat energy by conduction, convection and radiation. Insulation reduces these losses, improving efficiency. Thermal insulation is designed to restrict and resist heat transfer via three mechanisms, conduction, convection and radiation. Conduction is how heat moves along or through a material by effectively being passed along from one molecule to another. It can take place in gases, liquids or solids. The ability of a material to conduct heat depends on the material. Using a low conductivity gas in insulation rather than just air further helps to reduce conduction vection. Only takes place in gases or liquids, it cannot happen in solids or in a vacuum. When the molecules that make up a gas or liquid heat up, their density will change. Warmer air will become less dense and rise. Closed cell insulation with small cell sizes inhibits convection within the cell, making them less prone to affecting neighboring cells. Radiation is the method of heat transfer across space from one body to another as energy. Radiation can occur in gases, liquids, solids and even in a vacuum. The rate of heat transfer through radiation is controlled by the difference in temperature of the surfaces, the distance between these surfaces and the emissivity of the surfaces. Emissivity is how shiny a surface is, in other words, its ability to reflect thermal radiation. An example would be a low emissivity foil facing on an insulation panel or board. To summarize, heat transfer can occur through conduction, convection and radiation. Thermal insulation is designed to reduce the amount of heat lost or gained. Thermal insulation of walls will change with the thickness and the thermal conductivity of the insulator and so impact on the inside temperature. gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. Finally, most questions are targeted at gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy and the changes between them. In these questions, as one rises, the other falls, and this can be reversed. The total energy of a closed system remains constant. Let's look at the two formulas. Gravitational potential energy is equal to mass times gravitational field strength times height. Gravitational field strength G on Earth is 10 newtons per kilogram. Kinetic energy is equal to half mass times velocity squared. Don't forget the squared. Instead of putting a half, consider using 0.5. So let's look at the change from one energy to the other. The swing boat is a great example of kinetic energy converting to gravitational potential and back again. Kinetic energy at the bottom of the swing and gravitational potential energy at the top. Another variation on the theme. This ride launches the car at 100 miles an hour to the top of the ride where it gains gravitational potential energy 
and then it falls back down again, losing gravitational potential and gaining kinetic. All roller coasters work very much in the same way. Gain as much gravitational potential energy as possible and then convert to other forms in as exciting a way as you can. Let's look at the science behind one particular roller coaster, Stealth at Thorpe Park. Stealth rises 205 feet in the air and the cars do 0 to 80 miles an hour in 1.9 seconds. The maximum g-force is claimed to be 4.5. But first, let's look at the ride. Right then, here it is. A day that 71-year-old Helen will never forget. This is when I took her on the world's scariest roller coaster, Stealth! at Thorpe Park. Take a look at this. All right, Helen, look, that's it there. That's oh, stealth. No! Yeah. Come on. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> 205 feet high, and it goes 0 to 80 in under two seconds. Have you ever been on anything that fast? No, I haven't. Have you ever ridden anything that high? No. Right, well, no. come on. Come on. Oh, that's a <laughs> All right, no. don't get messy. <laughs> come on. Oh. All right, I'll go in first and I'll hold your hand. Come on. I'm glad you're with me, She's Vernon. A bit nervous. I am really. Come on. All right, I'll get in here. Come on, Helen, we're at the front. Do I get danger money? Do you know what? I asked that question myself. Did you? The, the answer was a definite no. Looking at the technical specifications, Stealth rises to a height of 62.5 metres, it has a maximum speed of 37.5 metres per second, accelerates from 0 to 37.5 in 1.9 seconds, G of 4.5. So let's just check these claims, starting with the speed. First of all, we are assuming that all the gravitational potential energy converts to kinetic energy with no losses anywhere else. So m times g times h equals a half m times v squared. g times h equals a half v squared. g times h over 0.5 equals v squared v squared is equal to 1250, therefore v is equal to the square root of that, which is 35.4 metres per second to 3 sig figs. Now let's check the claim for stealth acceleration. We all know the formula, a equals v minus u over t. The final speed is 35.4 metres per second, so 35.4 divided by 1.9 equals 13.4 metres per second squared, just over 2g. Formula 1 driver experiences between 2 and 4g when he accelerates and much more going round a corner. The claims are close though you could argue that energy is lost in the system, so the claims are a little generous. That's it for now. Thank you for watching.